As Boeing continues to struggle with ongoing delays and significant quality control issues surrounding both its 777X and 787 programs, Airbus has quietly been pulling ahead, securing major orders for the A350 airliner, and it's catching the entire aviation industry by surprise. How did the A350, a plane that started off with uncertainty, suddenly become the aircraft that every airline seems to want in their fleet? Let's take a closer look at the situation. The Airbus A350 is one of the most notable long-haul airliners globally, both for its performance and undeniably pleasing aesthetics. As of 2024, there are a total of 1,330 A350s that have been ordered globally. Out of these, 617 are already in service with 40 operators. These numbers paint the picture of a successful airliner that has captured the hearts of airlines and aviation enthusiasts alike from the start. However, far from it. The A350 has not always been on the positive side of things. To understand this, we need to go back to where it all began. In 2004, Airbus was strategizing the best way to respond to Boeing's announcement of the groundbreaking Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Initially, the company decided to update the Airbus A330 with new composite wings and new engines. This derivative was to be known as the A330-200 Lite. However, this move was met with sharp criticism. Aviation experts termed Airbus's decision as a frail response to Boeing's bold move to develop an all-new aircraft. So bad was the response that it was sarcastically termed as a band-aid reaction to the 787. Airlines also aired their dissatisfaction with the strategy. For instance, the then chief executive of Singapore Airlines stated that having gone through the trouble of designing a new wing, tail, and cockpit, Airbus should have gone the whole way and designed a new fuselage. The industry reaction was enough to force Airbus back to the drawing board. In 2006, the company announced that it had committed 4 billion euros to a project aimed at designing an all-new long-haul aircraft. The twin-engine aircraft, known as the Extra Wide Body, would be powered by Rolls-Royce Trent XWB high-bypass turbofan power plants. Just over a decade later, Qatar Airways operated the inaugural commercial flight of the A350-900 variant, flying from Doha to Frankfurt. Three years later, the airline also launched the A350-1000 to variant on its first commercial flight from Doha to London. Since then, the airliner has been well-received in the market, with many airlines increasingly choosing it over its Boeing competitors like the 777 and the 787. But is there proof that more airlines are choosing the A350 to serve their long-haul routes over Boeing? To answer this, we need to look at some recent developments. First up, in Australia, Qantas Airways has announced that it will take ownership of 12 new Airbus A350-1000 to in a move that will finally make non-stop flights from the east coast of Australia to Europe and New York a reality. Initially, the airline invited both Airbus and Boeing to pitch their offerings, with Airbus fronting the A350 and Boeing relying on the 777X. The stars seemed to have aligned for Airbus, as it was during this time that the A350 was on a world tour, which saw it land in Sydney. The aircraft's presence in Sydney gave Qantas engineers, executives, and crew an opportunity to board and experience firsthand what it offered. Ultimately, the decision to overlook Boeing in favor of the European aircraft manufacturer made sense. And this could be the missing piece of the puzzle that will eventually see the airline start these direct flights. Another airline that has made the bold decision to add the A350 to its fleet is India's flag carrier, Air India. Also in 2024, the country's biggest low-cost carrier, Indigo, announced that it had placed a firm order for 30 A350-900 aircraft with an option to purchase 70 more similar aircraft in the future. Emirates, which is one of the biggest Boeing operators in the world, has also shown its preference for the A350 in recent years. For example, in November 2023, the airline signed a deal worth $6 billion with Airbus for an additional 15 a 35905s This deal brought the total number of A350 aircraft that Emirates has ordered to 65. Other airlines such as Delta, KLM, China Southern, and Sichuan Airlines 
have also shifted their allegiance to Airbus by ordering more A350s. But why has the A350 suddenly become the go-to choice for so many airlines? Contrary to what many people might think, Airbus did not have to do much to make the A350 a hit in the market. Instead, the European aircraft manufacturer simply analyzed the commercial aviation market and gave airlines what they craved. The company was not shy about scrapping its initial plan of upgrading the A330 and rethinking its strategy. This led to the development of an all-new airliner that boasted a host of innovations to compete with Boeing. For instance, more than 70% of the A350 is made up of composite materials, titanium and modern aluminum alloys. These materials help create a super strong fuselage, allowing for increased cabin pressure. Regardless of the altitude the aircraft is flying at, the cabin pressure feels like 6,000 feet, which helps reduce fatigue and jet lag. This is a critical engineering aspect that could explain why airlines like Qantas and Singapore Airlines have chosen the A350 for their ultra-long-haul flights, some spanning more than 19 hours. Another feature of the A350 is its wider and quieter cabin, offering more passenger comfort, especially during ultra-long-haul flights. The airliner's common type rating with the A330 also contributes to its popularity. Pilots who previously flew the A330 can get behind the controls of the A350 in as little as eight days without needing full flight simulator sessions. According to Airbus, this common type rating gives airlines flexibility, allowing them to use a single fleet flying concept with pilots qualified to fly both aircraft. This reduces training costs and boosts operational efficiency. For example, Delta, which operates both the A330 and A350, can schedule pilots more flexibly and reduce downtime. However, the real game changer that has airlines lining up for the A350 is its impressive fuel efficiency. Airbus confirmed that the A350 burns 25% less fuel than many previous generation competitors in the market. The reduced fuel burn means that the more A350s an airline has, the more it will save in fuel costs. This is especially important in today's market, where fuel prices are highly volatile and unpredictable. Additionally, the A350's reduced carbon and nitrogen oxide emissions, as well as its 50% smaller noise footprint, help airlines meet global sustainability regulations. Even with all the attention it's been getting from airlines, enthusiasts, and passengers, the A350 has faced its own set of challenges. One such challenge hit the headlines in 2021 when Qatar Airways discovered abnormal paint degradation on several of its A350 after repainting them for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. This resulted in the grounding of affected aircraft and a halt in the delivery of new planes. The situation got messier when the European aviation regulator found that the paint issue did not pose a risk to the aircraft's structure. It was later revealed that other airlines, such as Cathay Pacific, Etihad, Air France, and LATAM, had made similar complaints as early as 2016. Despite this, Qatar Airways and Airbus settled the dispute out of court, and the A350 remains a top choice over its Boeing competitors. The additional perks of the A350, including its exceptional fuel efficiency, common type rating with previous Airbus models, and other advanced features, continue to make it the preferred airliner for many carriers. These benefits help airlines offer high-quality services while reducing operational costs. Its success is a testament to what can happen when an aircraft manufacturer listens to market demands and adapts accordingly. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.